Die Fluttermoss is a German operetta set in Vienna, Austria. It is about a bid getting his lick back, or someone who is made to be the butt of someone's joke and is now getting his revenge. Fade to black. When I saw it, the performers acted out the context of the story, but it isn't necessarily in the official script. But because I'm so lovely, kind, virtuous, and handsome, I will give you some context. A man in a bat costume and a man in a butterfly costume enter. The man in the bat costume, the Batman, if you will, is clearly inebriated and thus passes out on a park bench. His friend in the butterfly costume doesn't help him home. He lets the entire city clown the man in the bat costume. The entire city is perched on his dome, as they would say. When Batman wakes up, he realizes this and returns home in shame. Cut to the actual story. What do we see? What do we hear? We'll, we see a maid cleaning up a nice apartment in Vienna, and we hear a man named Alfred singing a love song addressed to a woman named Rosalinde. The maid, who is named Adele, is reading the mail and finds out that her sister, who is a ballerina, is inviting her to a rager held by a Russian prince named Orlovsky, and she should sneak a dress from the lady she works for. The maid laments that she has to work this dead-end job of being a maid, while her sister has so much fun being a ballerina. All the while, the dude is still singing. Adele hears Alfred singing and finds out that he is singing to Rosalinde, but she tells him that Rosalinde isn't home, even though she is. But Adele, she goes down to see if she can catch him for herself. I guess she is not a girl's girl, as they say. Rosalinde comes rushing, recognizing him by his voice, and reflects on her attraction to him three years ago, before she was married, and implies that she still has feelings for him. Arriving too late for Alfred, Adele goes to Rosalinde to see if she can't finesse the day off from Rosalinde by saying her aunt is sick, but she isn't having it because her husband Eisenstein is going to jail for five whole days, and they're giving him a perfect send-off. Now, it depends on the story or which theater company is telling it why he goes to jail, but in my screening, and I believe the official reason is for resisting arrest and hitting a cop with a whip and calling him a donkey. Rosalinda shuts Adele down and thinks to herself, what a nice and loving niece. Alfred appears behind Rosalinde and attempts to lay down the goods. Rosalinda says she's married. Alfred says that bling means as much as an onion ring and that Allenstein is going to jail later, so why does it matter? Rosalinde kicks Alfred out and he says he'll be back later. Rosalinde comments on how attracted she is to him. Enter. Eisenstein and his lawyer, named Blind, who are arguing. Eisenstein is fuming because he had his five whole days bumped up to eight whole days. Rosalinde is like, wow, that's so sad, but you are going to jail today though, right? Which well, he is. Eisenstein and Blind keep going at it until Adele enters and spits her sob story to Eisenstein, hoping to get days off from him responds that he saw her aunt today, and she didn't look very sick, which gags Adele. Blind leaves and reminds him that his legal services aren't free. So Eisenstein is like, tonight we dine as kings. But also, get me a dirty suit, so when I am in jail, people will ask me for money. Enter Dr. Falker. He shares an eerie resemblance with that bat guy from the beginning who goes up to Rosalinde and tells her, quote, I congratulate you on getting rid of your tyrant for eight days. Falker is here to cheer up poor Eisenstein before he goes to the slammer for eight whole days. Eisenstein is cheered up when he remembers the time Falker was clowned. Falker tells to himself that he hasn't forgotten 
this and that he's going to get his revenge and completely unrelated would Eisenstein like to come with him to Prince Orlovsky's party there will be wine women and songs but wait doesn't Eisenstein have to go to jail in an hour well Falker tells Eisenstein not to worry just skip out on jail and go in the morning he will go incognito as a marquee notably Eisenstein and Falker refer to Rosalinde as a kitten which um, just solidifies their discord moderator status <laughs> Eisenstein decides that you only live once and decides to whip out his pocket watch and tells Falker how he uses it to get girls by flexing on them Falker leaves and Eisenstein gets dressed in his finest clothes to go to the party but Rosalinde thinks he's going to jail. This makes Rosalinde suspicious, but her thoughts of suspicion are quickly replaced with her thoughts of Alfred. And so, out of the kindness of her heart, she allows Adele to leave as well to go visit her sick aunt. While Adele is helping Eisenstein, Eisenstein kisses Adele. Adele screams and Rosalinde is made more suspicious. Then they all posture about how sad they are that Eisenstein is going to jail. Then he says, he's going to jail to give himself up. And Eisenstein and Adele leave. Rosalinde is left alone. Enter Alfred, who makes himself at home, drinking Eisenstein's alcohol and wearing his nice clothes. He begins to sing and lay down the goods on Rosalinde. But then, they hear someone at the door. Who is it? none other than Frank the Jailer, who is here to take Eisenstein away, or Alfred away. Alfred, in a good mood, gives him a drink and sings with him. Frank is like, Eisenstein, you're so silly, but now it is time to go to jail. Alfred lets Frank know he's not Eisenstein, but then Frank asks, if you're not Eisenstein, why are you laying down the goods on Rosalinde? Rosalinde waffles until Frank agrees that it has to be Eisenstein because is he implying that she's unfaithful or something? Rosalinde begs Alfred to take the fall and she'll never forget what he did. And so Frank is like, because you're coming quietly, you can make out with your wife or whatever. And they get publicly sensual before he's taken off to jail. Fade to black end of the first act. Now cut to the ballroom of Prince Olaf Orlovsky. Orlovsky is usually played by mezzo-soprano, which means that it is unnaturally high-pitched for a male, which is revealed in almost every iteration of him being played en travesti by a woman. Even the original 1874 screaming was played by a woman, Irma Nittinger, the presumed reason for this is to characterize him as a decadent, spoiled, immature, and effeminate hedonist. Furthermore, as set up, Prince Orlovsky routinely uses French like Miss Piggy. But why would a Russian speak French when, as the name suggests, he would probably speak Russian? Well, in the 19th century, when the play was made, Russian nobles would speak French as a way to create power distance from their serfs in the flex that they were highly educated, which is important to the characterization of Orlovsky as a decadent overconsumer. He famously repeats one phrase, Chacon a son goût, which means each to their own taste en français. With all that out of the way, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Start of Act 2. Enter Adele and her sister, the ballerina. Adele thanks her sister Molly for the invitation, but Molly doesn't know what she's talking about, and tells her that her leg is being pulled. But because she likes her sister, Molly decides to vouch for Adele as an actress. Enter the hyped Prince Orlovsky, whose first lines are, In my 18 years, I have lived through 40. Everything bores me. I have almost forgotten how to laugh. My millions are my curse. And Falker, by Orlovsky's side, promises him that He's going to laugh because Falker has whipped up a little piece called The Bat's Revenge. Orlovsky and Falker meet Adele and Molly. 
Molly introduces Adele as Olga, an actor. Orlovsky gives both gambling money, but he would never gamble because he might win and that might bore him. Molly and Adele leave to gamble, and Orlovsky asks Falker what he plans to do. Falker responds that he doesn't want to spoil the surprise, but he will say that Olga isn't an actress, but the chambermaid of the wife of our hero. As soon as Falker is done speaking, our hero Eisenstein is announced by Ivan, Orlovsky's valet, as Marquis de Renard. He immediately owns the room and meets Orlovsky, who was unimpressed. To make the ordeal interesting, Falker tells Orlovsky that he is going to invite Eisenstein's wife, which he does by telling her that Eisenstein is going to be chatting it up with the ballerinas and that he can get her in, but she has to come disguised as a Hungarian royal. Then Orlovsky breaks out into song about how his guests can do whatever they want, Chacon Asongu, as he says. He doesn't care because he's the cool teacher. Eisenstein and Orlovsky talk. And who should happen by? None other than Adele, Eisenstein's maid, here to ask for more money because she and Molly lost it all. Eisenstein and Adele immediately recognize each other. And Adele, to save face, publicly mocks him for even thinking that she could be a lowly chambermaid with one of the two famous songs of the operetta. After, who seems to enter? None other than Frank the Jailer from earlier in the story under the pseudonym Chevalier Chagrin. Because Eisenstein is disguised as a Frenchman, Orlovsky suggests that they talk to each other in their native language, which Eisenstein waffles out of. Falker eggs the two on to talking to each other and to become more acquainted. Then Falker announces that another lady will arrive shortly, a Hungarian countess with a petty and jealous husband, which makes Eisenstein mad because who dare would treat a woman, let alone their own spouse, in such a way? While Eisenstein and Adele walk in the garden, Eisenstein whips out his watch, and he's laying down the goods when Adele shrieks, which reveals to Eisenstein that while Eisenstein and Adele walk in the garden, Eisenstein whips out his watch while he goes in to kiss. Adele shrieks, which reveals to Eisenstein that the person he's talking to really is Adele. He recognized her by the way she screamed. The scream was heard by pretty much everyone, including Falker, who is reveling in the fact that Eisenstein tried to get with his own maid. Rosalinde enters, announced as a Hungarian countess. Rosalinde goes up to Falker to ask him if what he said was true and if Eisenstein was cheating on her. Falker simply points to Eisenstein flexing his watch to the doves in the garden, let alone to her maid, Adele. Is that something he does often, Rosalinde asks? And he drags me into it, responds Falker. Rosalinde recognizes the jailer as well from earlier. After Eisenstein and Frank, the jailer talk about how much they have in common and how they should be best buddies. Eisenstein goes up to Rosalinde to try to spit game. Now, Eisenstein doesn't know that Rosalinde, his wife, is actually the Countess, but Rosalinde, his wife, knows that Marquis is actually Eisenstein. So Eisenstein brings out his famed watch. While they sing a love song together, Rosalinde steals Eisenstein's watch and goes back to the crowd. Eisenstein follows and tries to get the Countess to identify herself, but Olofsky comes to her defense. Molly then asks, if you're so Hungarian, then prove it. So Rosalinde sings a song about how much she loves paprika, I mean, how 100% Hungarian she is. After Rosalinde is done singing, Orlovsky goes to Falker and asks him to tell the story of the bat which is just the story I explained at the beginning. Eisenstein gladly does, which gets a laugh out of everyone. Then the famous Champagne Waltz plays, where they all sing about getting plastered. This song makes it clear why Orlovsky is usually played en travesti, 
he really is hitting the high notes. Everyone is celebrating and having a grand old time, but then the clock chimes six. Oh wait, wasn't Eisenstein supposed to be in jail or something? So both Eisenstein and Frank abruptly leave. And thus ends act two. Cut to the jail in which a drunk prison guard named Frosh is patrolling while Frank is away, undercut by the sounds of Alfred singing, which annoys him to no end. So Frosh leaves to give Alfred a piece of his mind. Frank enters, and Frank and Frosh's drunken shenanigans ensue. Frank details Frosh about his wonderful time at the party. Then a knock at the door. Who is it? None other than Adele and Molly. Adele confesses that she isn't actually an actress, but actually a maid, and then she shows her singing ability. Then the door goes a knocking again, and who is it? None other than Eisenstein or Marquis de Renard. Frosch ushers Adele and Molly into a cell, whilst Eisenstein and Frank catch up. Eisenstein tells Frank that he's here to be taken to his cell, to which Frank responds that's not possible, because he arrested Eisenstein last night, and that Eisenstein was relaxing in his nightgown, laying the goods on his wife. With my wife, says Eisenstein? No, with his wife, says Frank. Eisenstein puts two and two together, and realizes that he is being two-timed. Then, who should enter? None other than Blind. Eisenstein leaves and chases Blind so he can take his clothes and pretend to be him to catch a glimpse of the person pretending to be Eisenstein. Alfred and Rosalinde enter. Rosalinde wants to get Alfred out because when Eisenstein comes to check in, he'll find them out, not knowing that they've already been found out. Alfred says not to worry because they're getting a good lawyer. Enter Blind, who shares a striking resemblance to Eisenstein. Then, Rosalinde and Alfred sing about all they've done, all the while Eisenstein covertly passes judgment. At the end of the song, he reveals that he is Eisenstein, and he is not very pleased with her infidelity. She counters by showing him his watch that he tries to use to seduce the Hungarian countess with. Then, Frosch releases Molly and Adele, who meet up with Rosalinde and Eisenstein. Enter Orlowski, Falka, and all background extras. Eisenstein is confused about what is going on, so Falka sings his It Was Me Berry speech in that this was all the revenge of Die Fledermaus, the bat. Wow, I love it when the story uses the title in the story, and how it was an elaborate plot to get his revenge. And the display of friendship made Orlovsky's heart grow three sizes, and he laughed. Wow. Falker reveals that everyone was in on it, and he means everyone. Orlovsky says that he'll sponsor Adele's studies so that she doesn't have to live the dead-end life of a chambermaid, and they all reprised the champagne song from earlier, and they lived happily ever after. The main motif is overconsumption, as a symbol of overconsumption and decadence. Champagne can also be seen as an analog for desire and greed how everyone who wants something is either drunk at some point or engages with alcohol at another point in the story. Even the catalyst of the entire story, when Falka overconsumes and gets drunk off of alcohol and then comes to desire revenge. Adele overconsumes the patience of her employers and desires a better life. Orlowski overconsumes everything and comes to desire everything. The ending has a romantic quality to it which would not be uncommon considering the time the work was created, that even though Orlovsky had access to nearly every resource at his whim, he is still not happy, he still desires, and despite all the money presented to Orlovsky, only something rather democratic, something anyone can do, two friends playing jokes on each other, made him feel joy, made him laugh. From a psychological standpoint, Adele seems to experience severe existential dissatisfaction, which leads her not only to mope around, but to also risk it all and go to the party, so she can see how her more fulfilled sister is living. 
both Rosalinde and Eisenstein both display a self-serving bias, that they are both appalled when the other partner is presumed to be cheating, yet they seem to forget when they themselves are engaged in infidelity. As mentioned before, Orlovsky creates power distance by speaking French, yet he also displays signs of habituation to pleasure, that he has been inundated with so much pleasure all his life that he is totally numb, so he doesn't just chase pleasure in the story, he's also chasing any emotion, almost as if it were a drug. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's all he wrote, and that's all I have to say.